Good morning, friend. Food preservation season has officially begun. We've got this massive bowl of rhubarb that we are going to tackle today. We're gonna to make three, four different recipes out of this rhubarb, some sweet, some savory. So not all rhubarb recipes have to be sweet. And what I did last night is I kind of prepped the kitchen I got all of these canning jars in the dishwasher and washed because a lot of these haven't been used in a while. You don't need to sterilize your jars when you're canning, but they do need to be clean. So I just ran all of them through the wash. And then I pulled out our freeze dried goods that we had in the freeze dryer. Currently, I am gonna be running my freeze dryer probably constantly now that it is food preservation season. But before we get to the freeze dried stuff, I want to get going on one of the rhubarb recipes because that is gonna take a while to start to cook down. This rhubarb that we're preserving today is from the last homestead, it's from last year's harvest. I did not have time to preserve it, so I threw it in the freezer, and today's the day we are gonna tackle it. This is a steam juicer, so what we're gonna do is we are gonna juice the rhubarb, and we're gonna make rhubarb juice that you can use in, you can make it into lemonade, you can use it as a mixer for mojitos or margaritas, or just drink it. And I want to get this preserved up because Couple of reasons. One, I want to start emptying my freezer of anything from last year so that it doesn't, you know, get freezer burned because there's already starting to get some frost on it. So it needs to be taken care of to start emptying my freezer so I can start filling my freezer back up. But I also don't want this to get totally freezer burnt in there and I want to make sure we use it before it goes bad. What we're gonna do is we're gonna extract the juice from the rhubarb and then something I've never done before by using a steam juicer is that I'm gonna take the pulp and I think we're gonna can the pulp as sauce, not jam. I have enough rhubarb jam, I don't want it that sweet. I've got a couple rhubarb recipes where I want just a sauce that's not super sweet, so we're going to use the pulp for that. That needs to cook for quite a bit of time, and so while that's cooking, we're gonna get going on our next recipe. So we officially have two recipes going. We have our sauce and our juice. Next thing we're gonna make is some rhubarb barbecue sauce. This is a savory barbecue sauce. I mean, it's definitely sweet too, but you can use this on chicken, pizza sauce if you wanna make a barbecue pizza, all sorts of things. And I'm adapting the recipe from my favorite candy cookbook, The Complete Guide to Home Food Preservation. I can link this along with any of the canning equipment down in the description box if you are new, along with that steam juicer if you are new to canning and you're not sure where to begin. We're doing just water bath canning today. I did pull out my pressure canner, my electric one on the stove. I might do a little bit of pressure canning too because I need some more just plain beans on my pantry shelf, so we'll see. But first, we are going to get this rhubarb barbecue sauce going on the stove. I have a seven quart Dutch oven and we're going to add eight cups of rhubarb. It's been two years since I've made this. Last time I made it, I made a huge batch, so I don't need to make as big of a batch because I do have about four jars left on the pantry shelf. So two, four, six. Eight. I think I'm gonna do a batch and a half because that's gonna use this entire bag. Next, we are going to add five cups of brown sugar, raisins, apple cider vinegar, This sauce is gonna be blended, so we do not need to cut the onion too small. We're gonna add one onion, roughly diced. I'm 
Now I'm gonna get this on the stove and then we'll get the spices in it. To this, I'm gonna add two tablespoons chipotle powder, two tablespoons mustard powder, a tablespoon of salt, and a tablespoon of pepper. And that is everything so far that I'm gonna add into this rhubarb barbecue sauce. For this rhubarb barbecue sauce, I have made this one, I've actually made this, this is the third time I'm making it, and I have adapted the recipe, so I'm making note of what adaptations I am making to the recipe. When you are canning and canning for water bathing, you need to be careful when adjusting the recipe because you wanna make sure it's a safe product to water bath can, that it's an acidic product. If it's not an acidic thing and you water bath can it, you could run the risk of botulism. But I am not changing any of the ingredients that would affect the acidity level. So the original recipe is called Victorian barbecue sauce on page 256. And the ingredients are rhubarb, brown sugar, raisins, onions, vinegar, allspice, cinnamon, ginger, and salt. And to me, it's a really good recipe as written. That's how I made it the first time. But it's a little bit too warm with the spices. The allspice, cinnamon, and ginger kind of give it a Victorian. Those were very popular flavors in the Victorian era, and that's why it's called this. And that's not really what I want. I want more of a a standard traditional all American barbecue sauce flavor. And that's why I substituted just the spices. I substituted the allspice, cinnamon, and ginger for mustard, chipotle powder, and black pepper. I kept the salt the same and I did switch out the cider vinegar. I switched out the white vinegar for cider vinegar. So I made notes of all my changes. That's my new thing that I'm doing in my book. I am using it kind of as a journal and a cookbook. So I'm gonna to put today's date on here and the adjustments that I've made because I have made this two other times and I used these spices, but I didn't write down the, the amounts of spices that I did. So now next time I need to make this 2023, I, I will know exactly what I did. And so I'm comfortable adjusting the spices in a recipe, but I wouldn't want to add less vinegar or less sugar or less rhubarb or more onion or anything like that because that could change the acidity. But swapping out spices for a different spice, I'm totally okay with that. So this needs to cook for probably a half an hour or so to get the rhubarb soft, the onion soft, and so we can blend it up. The rhubarb in the top here is starting to get a little bit soft. I'm actually gonna steal some of this thawed rhubarb and we're gonna make some breakfast for Josh. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of this rhubarb off the top. And we're gonna get the rest of the frozen rhubarb in here to turn into juice and sauce. How this steam juicer works is there's about this much water in the bottom and then in the very top there is the fruit and there's a bunch of holes in the bottom and there's a hole that goes from the bottom all the way to the top so it boils down here it pushes steam all the way to the top it steams the fruit and then the juice drops through those holes into this container and this is where the juice is being collected i can show you right here that juice is already starting to come and drip through can you see that pink in there I'm really excited to use the steam juicer again. I didn't use it at all last summer. Life was just a little too crazy. But the year before, I used it a ton. I made apple cider from the orchard from the last homestead. I made pear cider using pears. And I actually used when I peeled and cored my apples for making applesauce, I took those peels and cores and I juiced those. And I got a ton of cider that is so delicious. And so I'm really excited to try it with rhubarb because I've never done that before. So here I'm going on and making Josh's breakfast. I've got four eggs because we're gonna make a baked oatmeal and I'm gonna make it right in here in the dish. Let me go wash my hands. I added some rhubarb, salt, eggs, and now I'm gonna add a little bit of butter. You could melt the butter. I have just gotten to the point where I just chop it up and mix it in like this and it melts in the oven. I did preheat the oven to 350 degrees. I'm gonna break up the butter a little bit. 
gonna add some brown sugar because that's what I have out. Old fashioned rolled oats. And then I pour in milk until it's the consistency I want. And it's that easy. You know me, while I'm in the kitchen, I might as well have a bunch of things going at one time, so I do decide to go ahead and can up some beans. I am gonna can up some navy beans and some black beans. Canning beans is probably the easiest canning project. As long as you have a pressure canner, you can't water bath canned beans because they're not acidic. And if you have electric pressure canner, it makes it even easier. But all I'm gonna do is wash my beans and I'm gonna put a half cup of dried beans in each of my pint jars. Normally I can in quarts, but this time I thought I would try pints and I'm actually very happy with the pints. I probably will can most of my beans moving forward in pints. And then you add some salt, some water, and you put a lid and a ring on. And I do the no soak, no boil method and it just makes it so, so easy to can beans. Very affordable way to get food on your pantry shelf and it's less waste than buying a tin can. So I just love home canned beans. They are convenient, they are affordable, and absolutely delicious. I figured I might as well go ahead and get some beans canned up because I only have about four cans or jars of beans in my pantry. And so while I have all the canning stuff out, might as well get this going. Canning beans is probably one of the easiest things to can. And I'm going to use my electric stove top or my electric countertop canner, so that makes it even easier. And I wanted to get some black beans and navy beans in pints because the only jars I have down there are quarts, and sometimes you don't need a whole quart of beans. So I am growing my own beans in the garden for dried beans, but one, it's going to be quite a few months before they're ready to harvest. And I don't even know if I'm going to get a harvest. I hope I'm going to get a harvest to can home canned beans. But in the meantime, I'll get some store-bought beans jarred up. It is time to start extracting some of the rhubarb juice from the pot. The juice is almost at the top of that hole and I don't want the, the rhubarb juice to start going down into the water. So this can be very, very dangerous because it's very, very hot. So I'm gonna do this the way I saw someone else do it is I'm gonna use this pot to hold my jar because I it's very hard. You can't really hold the jar because the liquid is so hot. So I'm gonna go like this and then, okay, you can already see the juice is starting to fill up in the tube. And what I think I need to do is put this here. I'm gonna turn this off. This is almost done and I don't want it to burn while I'm thinking about this. So I'm gonna turn this off and I'm gonna move it back here. And then you take this clamp and you open it and the juice starts flowing. I'm gonna leave room to put a little bit of sugar in the jar. This is way safer for sure to do it this way than the way I've done it in the past. This time I went ahead and I put four jars in my pot so that I can fill more than just one at a time. Next time I use my steam juicer, I'm gonna put a stool in front of my stove so that I could put the pot on the stool in front of my stove and I'm not holding it the whole time. I think that will be safer. I didn't really think about that till after I was done. So just take note that it probably would be safer not to be holding this really hot pot of liquid 
the pot's not hot, but if I dropped this, that would be very dangerous. So next time I'm gonna use a stool to hold my pot of jars. You do need to check for water to make sure that it's not boiling dry, but we still have a good amount of water in there. I've never made rhubarb juice before, so I wanna give it a try. It smells incredible. It is not as tart as I thought it was going to be because rhubarb is extremely tart. Very fresh. It smells like spring. It tastes like a rhubarb pie to me. That is going to be so good in kombucha, lemonade, iced tea, mojitos, margaritas, all the things. That is phenomenal. There's about this much left in here, but I'm going to go ahead and switch gears. I want to get the freeze dried stuff jarred up and then we will manage this rhubarb barbecue sauce because it is almost ready to be jarred up as well. I'm gonna turn this down so it's just a nice simmer. The first freeze dried thing I'm going to dry up are these strawberry leaves and this is gonna be for tea. And just think this tea might be so good with a splash of our rhubarb juice. Oh my goodness, that might be phenomenal. We need to taste test these strawberry leaves for tea, so we're gonna make some tea here in just a minute because I've never tried them before. Next up is basil. I'm putting this small amount of basil in this big jar because I'm hoping for a large harvest this year. Next up are chives. I'm going to cut them into the jar. I put them in the freeze dryer hole because I thought it would be easier to cut them after they were freeze dried. This is freeze dried oregano and I did not take the oregano off the stems when I freeze dried it so I am going to go through the effort of taking the stems off right now. This is the first year I have really freeze dried herbs. I have dehydrated herbs for many, many years. And I can just tell you the quality, just from looking at them, the smell, these freeze dried herbs are far superior to anything I have dehydrated. When I dehydrate, well, chives you can't really dehydrate. They turn brown and weird and not very flavorful at all. And they kind of aren't really appetizing looking either. Basil dehydrates pretty well. Oregano probably dehydrates the best out of all three of these herbs that I have right here. But I can already tell you that the, just the look, the smell and everything is just far superior. These basil leaves look practically fresh. I know that when I go to put these in pastas and top on pizzas and things like that, the flavor is gonna be phenomenal. So I'm going to get all these leaves off these stems and then we are going to get the raspberry leaves in a jar. I already know that I like raspberry leaf tea, but I think I wanna go ahead and give this strawberry leaf tea a taste test here in just a minute. But first things, I'm gonna get this oregano taken care of. If you are interested in a freeze dryer, I can link the one I have down below. It has been a huge blessing having that freeze dryer. One of the main reasons I do what I do, try to grow as much as my own food as possible, try to source local whenever possible, is because I like really good food. And usually homegrown or locally sourced tastes better. And I can definitely tell you that freeze dried herbs are going to taste way better than dehydrated. But do not be discouraged if you don't have a freeze dryer or can't put the investment in getting one right now. I dehydrated herbs for years, years and years and years, and they're really good too. I can just tell that this is going to be a little bit better. Strawberry leaves, we're gonna try that tea. Our rhubarb barbecue sauce is done cooking, so I'm gonna officially turn this off, but I need to empty this 
juicer before we tackle this sauce. You can use this steam juicer for all kinds of fruit. Grapes, cranberries, apples, pears, blueberries, anything you would juice, you can use this steam juicer for. My pressure canner is venting for 10 minutes. Wow. That right there, that combination is by far the best rhubarb barbecue sauce I have ever made. The chipotle powder is key. That is phenomenal. So that was 12 cups of rhubarb, five cups of sugar, one onion, two cups of raisins, one cup of apple cider vinegar, two tablespoons of mustard powder, two tablespoons of chipotle powder, one tablespoon of salt, and one tablespoon of pepper. Oh my goodness. I am gonna be making my rhubarb barbecue sauce like that every time. You don't really taste the rhubarb. It just adds this kind of, a little bit of fruity, tart, sweet, spicy that you want from a barbecue sauce, that's perfect. So now let's get that jarred up. I just pulled Josh's breakfast out of the oven. I wiped the rims down to make sure there was nothing on them. I'm gonna water bath can this barbecue sauce. Looks like I need to add a little more water. I need it above the jar, but I think I'm gonna get some of the juice in here at the same time. So I think they can at about the same temperature. Of course they can at the same temperature. They can at boiling because this is water bath canning. I meant same time. I just looked it up. The rhubarb juice needs to can for 10 minutes and the rhubarb barbecue sauce needs to can for 15 minutes. So we'll just can it all for 15 minutes. I'm adding two tablespoons of sugar in each jar. That way when I go to use this juice, it is already sweetened. I'll just let the sugar dissolve in the canning process. I'm just gonna take a little bit of the juice and top them off just to make sure they all have the correct amount of headspace. Once this comes to a boil, we'll let it boil for 15 minutes. But I think we have got all the juice we're gonna get out of this rhubarb. It's pretty dry. And I don't want it to be completely dry because I do want to make it into sauce. So I'm gonna get this out of here. I have all the juice jarred up, ready to go into the canner. But I'm gonna have to wait for the first batch to be done. So now I want to manage this pulp. So I'm gonna add one cup of sugar to this. I'm gonna mix this up. I don't know if I can can this. I'm gonna have to look up, because it's kind of thick. My thought for this is I can use it in my cream cheese rhubarb bars, because it's already sweetened. I could use it in quick breads. A rhubarb quick bread and I have the thought if I use it in a rhubarb quick bread I probably should not have added the sugar so I'm gonna put that I put 
how much sugar in this so that when I go to make a recipe, I can adjust if I need to. But if I was thinking, because I was thinking of using this for my rhubarb bar, rhubarb cream cheese bar, and I need to add sugar to that because you cook the rhubarb first with some sugar, you thicken it with a little cornstarch, and then that's one of the layers with some cream cheese, and it's a whole thing. But if I was going to make a quick bread with this, then I wouldn't need to add the sugar because the sugar is in the quick bread recipe itself. So I will find a use for it, whether I add it to Josh's baked oatmeal or I make two, three recipes. It looks like I'm going to get enough if I wanted to make three recipes of a rhubarb cream cheese bar. But I didn't want all this pulp to go to waste because I know that I can definitely find uses for it. So it's kind of cool that we got not only all this beautiful juice, this is the juice that's waiting to go into the canner, but we got a second byproduct. And you can do the same, oh, that's my timer. You can do the same method with applesauce if you want. You can get the apple juice from the apples and then you can take the pulp and turn it into applesauce instead of just cooking the apples down and down and down and evaporating the juice, you can harvest the juice. All right, so I put these in two cup measures in these Ziploc bags. The sugar in this will actually help keep this fresher longer in the freezer too. And cooking it. I like to freeze these really nice and flat so that they thaw a lot quicker. And I have enough, I think I have one more cup in there. I almost forgot to write how much rhubarb sauce is in here. So this last one is going to have one cup. I'm going to put sweetened. This probably could be canned, but I did not take the time to Google and find a canning recipe for this puree. And so I'm just going to freeze it. I figured that would be the easiest thing to do because I have so many canning projects. So that alarm was an appointment I need to go run to. And so I'm going to go do that. The awesome thing is Josh is home so he can watch the water bath canner for me. I will ask him to set a timer for 10 minutes. Actually, this is boiling. So I'm going to ask him to set a timer for 15 minutes and then ask him to remove these jars out of the canner in 15 minutes. The pressure canner does not need anything. I'm just going to let it go. I don't need to ask Josh to do anything. That's the beautiful thing about an electric pressure canner is it babysits itself. <laughs> you don't need any thought that goes into it. So I'm going to go run to my appointment real quick and then I'll be back to get all of this finished. I almost forgot our, about our tea. I want to take this tea with me on the road. So let's give this a try. I guess I will only take it if it's good. That's really refreshing. It tastes like green tea. It's a little bit grassy. See that beautiful pink color? Now that is delicious. That over some ice in the garden, harvesting green beans or strawberries. Mm. All right, I'm gonna take this with me and we'll be right back on my way out. I'll throw this rhubarb in the freezer. I just got home. Josh was able to take out those jars for me, and now I'm gonna get the second round of juice in the canner, and they are just so beautiful. The color is just incredible on this rhubarb juice. I have never seen anything so pretty before. This is gonna make a beautiful, beautiful beverage this summer. I was thinking when I was driving, using this concentrate and making a lemonade with fresh basil would be just phenomenal. Now I need to find my tongs. So we have one more round of juice to go, and then we will be all done with the water bath canning. Now that the baked oatmeal has cooled, I'm going to go ahead and get it packaged up so you can kind of see how it bakes up. This is Josh's favorite breakfast. I prefer steel cut oats or regular oatmeal to baked oatmeal, but he prefers the baked oatmeal. And so I usually make this 
on a regular basis. It's actually been probably two months since I've made it because we've just been having other things. And so I thought that this would be the perfect way to use up some of this rhubarb would be to make him a baked oatmeal because it's been a while since I've made it. And after I bake it, I like to package it up in these containers. These are glass snapware containers that Josh and I have had since we got married. We got them as a wedding gift and I absolutely love them. I can link them down below if you're interested in them. And the nice thing is they're glass and so they can be reheated. And I've never broken one, which is pretty impressive because I am known to break things. What a productive morning. It is not even noon and we got so much stuff done and I'm just really excited about the progress. We got 10 pints total of the juice. We have five pints still in the canner and then we have some pints here out cooling. We got five pints of our rhubarb chipotle barbecue sauce, one of my absolute new favorites. And then we got a half pint. I didn't can this one. I'm actually gonna pop this one in the fridge and I will probably grill up some chicken or something this week and we'll put that barbecue sauce on there. Plus we got in our electric pressure canner, I think there's eight jars of beans in there pressure canned. It is done, it's just cooling. So when it's completely cool, I'll take the jars out and I will label those and put those on the pantry shelf. We got seven cups of rhubarb puree and I can use that in bars, quick breads, baked oatmeal, all the things, but this would normally just be tossed. And so this is kind of a freebie item here. And I cannot be more thrilled with how these freeze dried herbs turned out. So my goal is to have all of these jars completely filled by the end of this season. I know it won't be a problem with our rhubarb tea, rhubarb raspberry leaf tea, delicious. I love this stuff. This, I might not do too much more of it. It is really good, but I definitely want to put more of my effort into the raspberry leaf tea. We will get more oregano and basil and chives. And I'm hoping for a really good cilantro harvest, but only time will tell on that. Josh's breakfast is done. Dishes are mostly done. I have my dishwasher running, and then I have some dishes in the sink that I'm gonna let sit here, because right now my parents are on their way and we are gonna go out into the garden and we are gonna work on sealing the rest of the raised beds. You have seen me do that. We're not gonna do that together. I'm gonna do it with them, but it's a perfect day. It's only supposed to be in the mid 50s today. And so my mom, my dad, me, the baby, who are all gonna be hanging out there together working on sealing the raised beds. I got him a little tent thing <laughs> that he can hang out with us out there and I think it's gonna be super fun. So it's just gonna be a great way to spend the afternoon with some family and we got so much stuff done in the kitchen here together today and it was just so wonderful. So if you're interested in canning, I can leave my favorite canning resources down below so don't forget to check out the description box. I can also leave a whole canning playlist and food preservation playlist down there as well if you're interested because this is the beginning of real preservation season. When rhubarb comes in out of the garden, that's when serious garden season for me is like, check, we are in garden season. Even though this rhubarb isn't from this homestead, it's still from the last homestead, but if you don't have rhubarb growing, go down to your local farmer's market. This is the perfect time to go find some local rhubarb. I have planted rhubarb out in the garden and they're this big. And so it will be a few years before we can harvest any rhubarb off those plants, but hopefully in the coming years we'll be able to do that. And hopefully this rhubarb food preservation project that we just did here will last us until that rhubarb is ready. But if not, I can always go support a local farmer and go to my farmer's market and pick up some rhubarb. So I hope this is encouraging to you. I hope you try canning. It is so fun. It is so satisfying getting these jars out of the canner and on the pantry shelf. It's just really one of my favorite things. So thank you for being here and sharing in my passion. Thank you for being you. And I can't wait to see you next time. Bye friend.